Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. This is the first video of 2019, so I thought we'd start the year off with a nice design to code. To follow along with this tutorial series, I have everything you need in the project file. The link will be down in the description, so make sure you guys download that and you'll be at the starting point that I am so you can follow along with this video. In this video, we're going to start our design and then we'll have following videos after this that will lead up to the completion of our fully coded website. Today's video is sponsored by bookmark.com. Bookmark is a really cool and easy way to build a website in under two minutes. By answering seven simple questions, Bookmark uses an artificial intelligence to build your website right before your eyes. You can even create an online store if you have items to sell. So if you're looking to build a website, there's a link in the description down below for bookmark.com. So for this website, we're gonna have a lot of elements that are going to be fixed on the screen. So there's not gonna be a whole lot here because there's gonna be a lot of real estate taken up by those elements. First up, we're gonna start off with the navigation and we're gonna do our logo right here. I'm just gonna type out my name. And for this, I'm doing all caps just for a nice effect. So I'm gonna set that to our black color, which is 1F202B. And I'm also using Avenir, I think is how you pronounce this font. And this is 17 size. And I'm gonna set this from book to a medium size weight. Then up here in the corner, I'm just gonna drag this over and out of the way. I'm gonna zoom in a bit so I can see how large my text actually is. And I'm gonna create a rectangle about the same height as my text. And we're gonna put this right beside it. And let's do about three spacing. This rectangle is going to be blue. The blue color we're using today is 5952FF. And I'm going to remove the border on that. So I'm just going to set the width on this to seven. And I'm actually gonna lower the height down on this to 14. Then I'm gonna realign this. So we're gonna center it up to the text and we'll do three spacing beside it. I'm going to select both of them and hit command G to group them. We're going to use the second column of our grid and we're going to line that to that side and we'll go 50 down from the top. So 50 pixels below the top. And if we zoom out, that's the positioning for our logo. So obviously since this is a portfolio project, you're going to want to put your name there. But for now, we're just going to have mine. And then here on the right side, we're going to have some links. So I'm actually just going to copy this text holding alt. And since that's in a grouping, I'm going to hit command shift G to ungroup it, select that rectangle, and we'll just delete that to get it out of the way. Since we're now going to be aligning stuff here on the right, just to make it easier, I'm going to make sure our text is aligned to the right. Let's type in work. And this is going to be our first link. I'm gonna hold Alt and create a duplicate. And I'm gonna go 60 pixels to the left of this work. And we'll change this to contact me. Since contact me is important, it's like our hire button, I'm gonna select that and we'll just change that to our blue so it stands out a little bit more. Next, I'm gonna drag in a symbols. I just imported this. This is a grid icon. And I'm gonna slide these links over and we'll just put this centered with our text and I'm going to align it to the side of the second column here. Once we have that there, we'll just slide these back over and I'm going to put six spacing in between work and this icon. I'm going to grab everything in our navigation and center it up with our align tool. Then I'm going to hold alt with that selected and make sure we have 50 space here at the top, which we do. I'm also going to group work and this grid icon together. I'm kind of thinking of it as when you click this button, it's going to open up multiple projects. So that's kind of why I'm going with the grid icon. Uh, so this is going to link to your Dribbble or Behance. And the contact me is going to do a mail to, which I'll show you what that is later on when we get to the code. So since we're linking to work somewhere else, this website's not only going to look really nice, but it's going to be really easy to maintain this. So our top navigation is going to be fixed. So I'm going to select all of it and hit Command G to group the entire nav together. And I'm going to go to the property inspector and click fix position when scrolling. Next, let's create some more links. So let's do our social media down here in the bottom left. I'm going to start with YouTube. Make sure that's Avenir 17 and medium. And we're going to put this 50 from the bottom of the artboard. And I'm also going to make sure it's aligned on the second left hand column. I'm gonna hold Alt to create a duplicate and go 60 pixels to the right. That's gonna match the spacing that we used up here. 
and we'll change this to another social media. This time I'm gonna go with Instagram. And then finally I'll add one more and we'll do Twitter. Finally, we're gonna put something here in the bottom right corner. So I'm gonna grab Twitter and hold Alt to make a duplicate and drag over to the second right hand column. And here I'm gonna put in some copyright information, 2019, copyright logo, and then my name. Once we have that, we'll select everything, group it together with Command G, and I'm also gonna turn this to a gray color instead of black. The color code on this is 8A8CA5. With that still selected, I'm also gonna to go to the property inspector and check the fixed position when scrolling. So next we're gonna make this look really modern with some detail in the background using the line tool. So I'm gonna grab a line and over here on the far right column, I'm gonna drag out from the top of the artboard all the way down to the bottom and I'm gonna hold shift to make sure this is a perfectly straight line. For now, we're gonna set this color to blue just so we can see it a little bit better. And I'm gonna go eight pixels to the right using my arrow key. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the reason I'm doing that is because each of these columns this, on this grid have a 16 pixel gap and 16 divided by two is eight. So that's gonna allow us to have each of these lines exactly the same distance apart from each other. So I'm gonna grab this line, I'm gonna hold alt and drag over a duplicate. I'm gonna go over two columns and then here on this column, I'm gonna go over eight pixels to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's gonna put these two lines 276 pixels away from each other, which is the exact spacing we're gonna use throughout. So this is exactly in between these two columns on the grid. And I'm gonna repeat this all the way over to the left-hand side. So now that I have that, if I just select one of them and hold Alt and highlight over the other one, you can see that all of them have 276 spacing in between, so they're nice and consistent. So I'm gonna double click on the artboard and turn off the layout grid for now. So now you can see these blue lines and it looks pretty cool. So now we can drag and select all of them and I'm gonna set them to a light gray, which is E7, E7, E8. And then we also need to send these to the back. So Command, Shift, left square bracket key, will send them all the way to the back of the artboard. So now let's finish off this first landing section of the website. Double click on the artboard and turn on the grid again. And now we're gonna start with the H1, so the heading. So I'm gonna paste in a bit of text and this is gonna say Experience UI UX Designer. And I'm gonna line this text to the left. And I'm gonna set this to the largest Avenir font, which is 50 points. And I'm gonna change the weight on this from medium to a black, so it's nice and bold. On the third column over here on the left-hand side, we're gonna line this there. And I'm gonna drag this down until we have about 340 spacing from the top. And that's where we're gonna position our first heading. Below that, we're gonna have some text. So I'm gonna grab the text tool and just drag out a text area. That's the same width of these four columns right here. I'm gonna put in a bit of text. And I'm also gonna set this to the body size font, which we're gonna be using 17 size font. And on the color, we're gonna be using the gray color here. Next, I have a plugin. So I'm gonna go up to the top, select plugin, content generator, and I'm gonna select a paragraph. That's gonna generate some lorem ipsum and I'll just remove some of this. And we'll drag this text area to match our text height. This is gonna go 13 pixels below our heading. And we're gonna have one more paragraph, so I'm gonna hold Alt and create a duplicate and go down 13 pixels. And just for good measure, I'm gonna change the lorem ipsum for some variety. On this one, we'll make it two lines of text. And because of that, we'll need to change the height of the text area. Again, feel free to customize any of these headings or paragraphs as you want, so you can put anything you want in here. So next to the heading, I'm going to grab a line and we'll just drag one out the width of this column. So that's 122 pixels wide. And I'm gonna change the size on the border to three, just to add a little thickness to this. And then I'm gonna change this to this black color. Then I'm gonna try to center that up with this first line of text, just making sure it looks like it's centered there. And we zoom out. That's what you get with that. And also for another little detail, I'm gonna put a rectangle behind this with a bit of color. So for this, I'm gonna grab a rectangle and I'm just gonna come over here and drag it out. And we'll just do this visually to there. 
and we'll drag this up and I want the bottom of this rectangle to split this word in half. So I'm going to drag that to about there. Command shift left square bracket key to send it to the back and I'm going to fill this at blue and remove the border. So now since it's all the way in the back you can see the lines over top. So I'm going to hit command right square bracket key until it comes above those lines so you can no longer see them. And this is actually aligned with the exact center of the document and this side is aligned halfway the width of this line right here. For the height, we'll just kind of align that visually. So around there, and I'm also gonna drag the bottom down just a little bit. So that gives us a rectangle that's 621 pixels wide by 151 high. So let's turn off the grid so you can take a look at what we have so far. So that's looking pretty nice. So now we're gonna add a little bit more here, so I'm going to turn back on the grid, and now I'm going to create a rectangle that is exactly 366 pixels wide by 120 pixels tall. Then on this, I'm going to remove the border and apply a drop shadow. On the drop shadow, I'm going to set the Y value to 5, and the blur is going to be set to 20. I'm going to select the shadow color and paste in 4B4F. 7C, and I'm going to make sure this is set at 10% opacity. So that's going to give us the shadow that we're looking for. And then we're going to align this up here on this second column so it is in line with the edge of the grid icon and our copyright info. So we'll just align that like that. I'm going to hold Alt and create a duplicate and go down 40 pixels. And I'm going to do that two more times to make four of these. I'm going to select all of them, group them together with Command G, and we'll align this vertically middle using our Align tool. And then I'm going to hit Command Shift G to ungroup them so now that we can work with them individually. So let's double click on the artboard and remove the grid because it's kind of in the way. And we'll just zoom in a bit. So each one of these is going to have one of the things that we do. So if you have more things you do, you can increase the number of these or decrease them depending on what all you do. So first off, I'm going to put in UI slash UX design. I'm going to set this to 30 pixels and make sure the font weight is at medium. And we're going to center align this text and we'll just center it up inside of the rectangle. To double check that, I'm going to select the text. Hold shift, grab the rectangle, and align vertical and horizontal using our line tools. Next, we can hold Alt and drag down. And for this one, I'm going to say digital design. The third one will go with product design. And lastly, front end development. That text is just a little large for that box. So if you want to increase the width of the box, make sure you increase all of them. For now, I'm just going to leave that alone. So with that, that's our first section of the website done. So I'm going to double click on the artboard. Up here on the height value, I'm going to put in times two, and that's going to multiply this by two. And then down here in the bottom, we'll have a, just a little bit more content. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a rectangle that is 1080 by 1920. Then here at the top, I'm going to select these paragraphs and this text and the line. Command C, Command V to create a duplicate. And I'm going to drag that down here in the bottom. Double clicking on the artboard, we're going to turn the grid back on by checking that. And then we will align this text to the very center of the artboard. So there's the center and we'll line it to this column here. Then I'm going to hold Alt and we created this rectangle here in the background so I can get the spacing. We're going to go 340 pixels from the top. So now that we have that, we can select the rectangle in the background and just delete it. I'm going to edit this text to say design and, and then development. Lastly, I'm going to create a rectangle and just drag it in. Kind of like that, and we'll align this on the one, two, three, four, fifth column on the right hand side, and we'll just put this around there. And I'm going to color this blue and turn off the border. 
I'm gonna hold Alt on this text and drag over. Command Shift, right square bracket key to bring it to the front. We'll set this to white. And here I'm gonna edit the text and say, and we'll enter that in. And we're gonna align this to the right. And I'm gonna position this in the bottom right of this rectangle. I'm gonna zoom in and I want no blue to be visible. So I want the white to bleed into the white in the background on the top and the bottom, just like that. And then I've imported another symbol. I'll call this one arrow. Again, this will already be there for you. And I'm going to drag this into the top right hand corner of our rectangle. So now this is what we have. So to finish this off, I'm gonna select all the lines and hit Command Shift Left Square Bracket Key to make sure they're all the way in the back. And then I'm gonna select the top navigation, hold Shift and grab the bottom navigation and hit Command Shift Right Square Bracket Key to make sure those are all the way into the front. And also I have these lines at a fixed position. So if I didn't mention that in the video, you wanna click fix on that. So now when we hit the desktop preview, as we scroll down, it looks like only these two sections move, which is good and this scrolls in from the bottom. So this website's looking really clean and modern, and I think with a lot of motion in there when we get to the code, I think that'll really bring this project together. So that is it for part one of this design to code. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more design-related content. I try to upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss a video. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.